Hi, and welcome to the third and final class of 3D Without Glasses, Auto Stereoscopic Displays. I'm Greg Favalora with Optics for Hire. Let's get into it. 3D displays and 3D imagery are depicted everywhere in the media and Hollywood. Some of these things are actually possible with technology available in 2010, and some probably will never be. So already there's been uh, two previous classes, the first on depth cues and the basics of projecting three-dimensional images. The second class uh, was a very broad survey of many different types of 3D display. And this, the third and final class, will be looking at some more cutting-edge techniques for light field displays and some extras. And the prerequisites stay the same. These classes were produced by a company called Optics for Hire, which is a product development firm outside of Boston. We invent and improve optics-based products, such as LEDs, uh, lens systems, and what we call physics-heavy based product design. We're in Boston, uh, Lviv, and Minsk. There are 25 of us working uh, for the last seven years on about 100 different projects. Our CEO is John Ellis, and I'm Greg Favalora. Uh, my background is largely in three-dimensional displays. I used to run actuality systems, which made a high-resolution volumetric display, as well as several, several other types of auto stereo displays. Optics for Hire has worked on a large variety of product and lens designs, uh, which include the electronics, the mechanics, and the optics. And here are some of our clients. So today's agenda picks up where we left off last time. We'll be talking about something called inverse super resolution and piecewise light field reconstruction, as well as uh, what some future directions are for 3D displays and where you can learn more about this topic. So the dream display is depicted here. These are two slides I used at a talk in SIGGRAPH about the so-called ultimate display back in 2005, and I think the vision has stayed the same. On the left is an image of some product design floating in the center of a conference room. Um, the people looking directly at the screen can see the entire car, and the people off to the sides can see just a tiny bit, unless some new technology is developed uh, that allows the photons to sort of change direction in midair. And on the right is a different technology uh, used for um, surgical simulation, surgical guidance. But in both cases, optical electronic bandwidth is the key. So we touched upon this in the first class. Let's have a specific example now that we're uh, deeper into the subject. The fundamental requirement <coughs> for the class of, I suppose, all of the 3D displays that I'm aware of uh, is that you need many, many pixels per second. You have to be able to uh, programmatically generate many photons per second. So taking an example, let's assume a 3D display that uses geometrical optics, so not a hologram. Uh, the display surface needs to have enough pixels so that you see a high detail image, such as XGA resolution, which is 1024 by 768 pixels. If you assume that you'd like to satisfy um, the rule of thumb that there's about one or two views per pupil in your eye as you move left and right looking at the screen, this suggests that you need about 200 individually addressable ray trajectories per pixel. And there's no standardized vocabulary for this, but some people call these durals, or directional pixels, directional elements. It's a 40 hertz, uh, I'm sorry, a 60 hertz display with 4 bit for each of RGB. And what you find when you multiply all these out is that you need 113 billion pixel modulations per second. This works out to be equivalent to 144,000 XGA fields per second. That's, that's a lot of light switching, and it's really at the edge of what today's uh, MEMS-based light modulators can do. So this suggests, uh, in 2010 at least, that you need to use a fast spatial light modulator, such as a TI-DMD, maybe some ferroelectric LCDs, but those are still lagging behind uh, orders of magnitude. And then <coughs> you can play some tricks with it. You can use the pixels directly, or uh, you can do some new things that we'll introduce in this class, such as you can use that bandwidth to create or simulate a much higher resolution field by integrating over a brief time interval. We call this inverse super resolution. Or you could scan a sequence of XGA fields. 
let's let's get into the first topic, uh, super resolution. So um, here's the motivation for this thing called super resolution, which is that digital projection displays have really limited resolution. And so to get more pixels than the catalog part, you have to buy and stack display cubes or merge the imagery from several displays. And there are companies uh, that do this. Um, so for example, you could set up 20 displays and then a camera will calibrate them automatically. Uh, but if you don't have that software, it could be very difficult to align these systems. So this is an actual photograph of the length some people go through to get a high resolution display. You could see a woman looking at, what is that, one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 21 of these displays simultaneously just to get high resolution. There has to be a better way. So, um, so for teaching purposes, I'll walk you through a three-dimensional display, half of which is a super resolution system and half of which is a lenticular image. And that's uh, an example by which we can describe a particular super resolution system. So although philosophically I haven't been a huge fan of traditional lenticular displays, just because the resolution ends up being quite low and the image quality is low, there are interesting things you can do with lenticulars. For example, you can put an incredibly high image backplane uh, onto it and then get a much higher resolution image per view than you might ordinarily through just sticking a standard lenticular onto a standard LCD panel. So how does this work? Well, first there's a high resolution backplane. Um, back when we were at Actuality Systems, the engineers uh, invented some technology that's now owned by Optics for Hire in which you can create a 20 megapixel two-dimensional image from a 0.8 megapixel projected DMD image. <coughs> you could also make different multipliers. This is about 20 or 25, but you could also make a 4x multiplication. So as you can see, you start with a single uh, XJ resolution DMD, and by adding an optical module in front of it and clever software, you can create a 20 megapixel image. Uh, a second aspect of this display is a custom lenticular screen which we characterized optically. And a third aspect of this display was some software that did defocus precompensation. That is, it assumed that there was a little bit of misfocus in the lens of this high resolution projector and would alter the input imagery so that when it's convolved by the point spread function of the projector, it works as well as could be expected. So how do you make the super resolution display where you start with a low resolution image and end up with a high resolution image? And for this example, the multiplier was 25x. So uh, you were able to project 25 simultaneous Windows XP computer screens <coughs> out of just one projector. And a reason why you might want to do it is there's many commercial applications for 3D display or high resolution 2D display, such as um, seismic imagery for oil and gas. 